guys. How are ya? I am making potato leek soup today. Um, <laughs> just had to wash my hands. I'm gonna get my pan. Please turn on. That's a big um, cast iron skillet, the Dutch oven. So I'm gonna let that one get warmed up. I am really trying hard to get everything in the shot so you can kind of see what I'm doing. My kitchen is not designed for doing lives, but I'll do the best I can. First off, potato leek soup. I had a lot of leeks in my refrigerator. They did not look good. If you knew what I was getting off, of the things like look at this I kind of buried it in my fridge and forgot about it so I'm gonna clean this one up shortly I cleaned the rest up because that took quite a while I got I'm gonna turn this down so you can kind of see so there's about a pound before I clean them up um, of leeks cleaned up meaning I took off the dark green leaves that really at this point they were not dark green they were kind of yellow and slimy but look what's inside it looks good right it's fine so I'm going to cut these guys up and throw them in my Dutch oven with some butter now I don't have to clean the inside of these they are not sandy they're not really dirty, and I don't have to be too fussy about how I'm cutting them because they're just going to get um, pureed anyway. I'm going to use my immersion blender. So this is the end where all the leaves, the leaves were, and each leaf that comes out is where the, um, the dirt would be hiding if there was any. So that's pretty much the only spot that I would really have to clean. If you need to do that, cut them down that way. I leave them attached because it's just easier. And then I run this under the faucet and the water will wash away any dirt. But since these are nice and clean, I do not have to do that. And no, it has doesn't have much to do with where they're from. Um, it's just that these were really big at one point and I have been able to peel away the dirty stuff. Can you guys hear me okay? Hi, Mama. Tell Thomas when dinner's ready, please. Let's see if my pan is hot. Not even close. That's okay. So I'm going to take about two tablespoons of butter. I assume you know, but I'll tell you anyway. There's measurements on here, markings, two tablespoons. And I'm going to cook it pretty slowly because I don't want browning here. I don't want it browned because that will make your, that'll make your soup get a little bitter and it will discolor you. Thank you, Mel. Gonna grab my bowl. I don't know. I planned this like yesterday and I'm still not prepared. Kristen and I discussed it and we kind of, um, we thrive on the panic and chaos. Look at this beautiful bowl that my cousin Shane made. I hope you're on Shane. All right, so we've got almost a pound of leeks that I cleaned. So that means, I'm gonna say it was about 15 ounces. How do I know? Because I weigh it. Sounds crazy, but if you don't have a food scale, you should get one. I will show you what I have. This one is from Salter. Is that the one you should buy? I don't know. Cook's Illustrated recommended it. I got it like 15 years ago. Battery powered. You can 
put something on top, hit the zero button, then you can weigh stuff in here and that will kind of cancel out the weight of this when you zero it. Sometimes I make um, cake recipes where I put the bowl on top, zero it out, weigh the flour, zero it out, add the other ingredients, whatever they're called for in the recipe. It's a much more accurate way of measuring things. If I told you to use two large leeks, well, at this stage of the game, this is a large leak at my farm. You wouldn't know really what to use and your results would not be as consistent as others or as the recipe author intended. So it doesn't really make sense to say two medium leaks or two large leaks. It's one of my pet peeves when people write recipes and they say, use a small onion. Oh, I'll show you a small onion. Come to the farm on Saturday, I'll show you some small onions. Doesn't make sense to me. So just weigh things if you want accuracy and consistency. What's going on guys? Anybody have some questions or are you good for the holidays? Do you have any parties coming up? I cut that one in half um, because it was a little tippy and I don't need to cut my fingers off. I don't wanna look like my father. He's the most handsome man, but his fingers are short. All right, so I've got some butter melted here. I'm gonna throw these in. You're not gonna hear them sizzle much. A little bit, a little bit. So that'll give me some time to peel my potatoes. I've got about two and a half pounds. How annoying is that plastic bag? Two and a half pounds of potatoes. I'm gonna let those start cooking and then I will get, um, get some salt in there. These are the russet potatoes. They have a really thick, hard, skin. Um, these are the good ones for baking. Um, they're also drier, so I think they're really good for this soup. Other people like um, Corollas or Yukon Golds. I think these are good. You read an article about weighing the ingredients and we're the only country that uses cups and tablespoons. Well, yeah, the, uh, what is it? Empirical versus, imperial? Empirical? Imperial versus um, metric. Yes, I know, but what are you gonna do? You're gonna give up all your old recipes? Old habits die hard. I know they can all be converted. Who's gonna do that? Do you want to? I would. I probably have. So I see Sherry and Appy. You guys requested to be live. Do you really wanna go live? <laughs> Kristen, you cook by eye, I'm sure. Baking, of course, is a little different. I have tried baking by eye and it does not work. Just like that time I forgot to put the eggs in my oatmeal cookies. Did not work. Again, Kuhn Ricone vegetable peeler. Love it. In a breeze. My sister-in-law said, uh, Actually, Denise, when she was here making pierogies with her husband, we were peeling, and by we, I mean they, they were peeling the potatoes, and she immediately bought these because they were so simple. Oh, stop, that's not why you don't bake. I hear sizzle. gonna take a little bit this might be a this might be a half hour let's see how long it takes so it takes a little bit of time for those um, leeks to sweat down then we're gonna add the potatoes we're going to add broth so let's be honest do you use homemade chicken broth or vegetable broth do you use bouillon cubes do you use better than bouillon paste 
What do you use? I want to hear. I want to hear what you guys do. <laughs> okay, I didn't think so. Because I'll be totally honest, sometimes I use cubes, sometimes I use the better than bouillon paste in the jar. I don't know, it tastes fine to me because I like MSG. Homemade is definitely better, but, ah, better than bouillon to kind of boost it up a little bit. Well, that's smart. I make homemade chicken stock. I don't do, um, I don't do beef stock because that's a lot of work. And I don't really use anything that would require beef flavor. Oh, Goya. All right. Yes, it is better when you make it. So I use Knorr, K-N-O-R-R, -R, or the Better Than Bouillon. It depends on my mood. But it is a really good um, flavor booster. So if you're just going to kind of steam saute some broccoli or something, you can do a little bit of the water in the bottom of the skillet, add a spoonful of the Better Than Bouillon, and then your broccoli and it will kind of steam with that flavor, and then the liquid will reduce. The liquid will reduce, and it'll make a nice um, sauce that really doesn't have any fat. This is why you always get extra potatoes, because you never know when you're gonna get that, which is not always true, because I knew that this one had a, a dent in it, okay? So that's kind of an idea indication that there's something not quite right on the inside. But as farmers, we're used to using up things and not wasting as much. If my kid is watching this, he's gonna say, I'm such a liar because I always throw away stuff. That's only because I forget it's in the fridge. All right. Oh. Oh God, I can smell these. So they're kind of like a sweet onion. I'm gonna add some salt. That's gonna help them soften up quite a bit. All right, my potatoes are done and I am going to start slicing these up. And once we get them in the pot with the water, I can make a drink. It's clearly I need it now. a little bit. Let's see where we are. Okay, so you're you're Ukrainian but you use Goya bouillon. You know what? I made pierogi two weeks ago. Yesterday I made jambalaya. The night before I made gnocchi. Doesn't matter where you're from or what your nationality is. Make whatever tastes good. Um, yes, better than bouillon. Someone told me they have like a seafood, they have mushroom, they have lots of cool things. I don't know. I don't know. I get the vegetable one and then chicken cubes. So that's where we go. What did I do with my knife? There it is. Now I want these to cook fast. Faster. Is that better? It's a little bit better. So I'm gonna cut them in half and cut them into thin slices. I'm gonna say a quarter inch. That looked like a quarter inch. So there's a lot of surface area here that will be in contact with the boiling stock or water. And then it will cook faster. I'm going to use, uh, we'll see. I'm gonna measure the water that we're using here, but it's pretty much to cover the potatoes. You don't wanna use an abundance or overabundance of water or stock because then it dilutes the soup and it gets too um, thin. If you're gonna have potato leaf soup, I don't think you want it too thin. And if my father's watching, he's gonna say, he likes chunks and it's a pain in the neck. He doesn't turn down free food but he has very strong opinions about it. 
Chili one? Wait, there's a chili one? There's a chili better than bouillon? Okay. Hi, Hannah. We've missed you. I hope we're going to see you Saturday. I haven't seen Henry in forever. Um, so I know Hannah is one of our regular CSA members. And back to stirring. I will bring that over shortly just to show you what these kind of look like. I'm tempted to add more butter just because more butter is always better. Um, so we have our final pop-up sale here at the farm on Saturday. Hannah likes to shop with Cedar Hill Botanicals. Arlene makes all kinds of goat's milk soaps, aromatherapy products, the inhalers, the um, bath bombs. Several of her items are going to be discontinued after this uh, event. So if you want certain things, I suggest you get out to the farm early on Saturday and get them. <laughs> well, don't walk, but I hope you'll be here. Hello, Alice. Nice to see you. Alice just tuned in because she must have known there's vodka on my counter. I decided to do a Cosmo tonight because red is festive and that felt like the thing to do. And I think Marina, Marina and Deborah both suggested vodka tonight, so I will do that. They're getting a little softer. Let's see if I can do this. If I lose you guys, I'm so sorry. So my mother informed me that last week when I had the light on over the stove, <laughs> it was too glary. So now you can kind of see they're getting a little softer. The bigger ones are not yet, but they will. They will. It won't take long. I usually plan it. Oh, good. Alice is having a cocktail, too. Um, I usually plan it so I can get this going, get the leeks going. While the leeks are going, I get the potatoes done. And I actually do it in the Instant Pot most frequently because then I don't have to watch anything. Honestly, if I cut the potatoes like this, once the leeks are cooked, I add the potatoes, I add the stock, I put it on for about five minutes, close the lid, pressure it up. Maybe it takes about seven minutes to come to pressure, about as long as it would take for a, um, a pot of water to boil. And then I let it go for five minutes. Once the pressure comes down for a few minutes, I can let that um, release go, open it up, blend it with the immersion blender, and it's done. I don't have to sit there and stir anything. And being under pressure, means things cook faster. If I can cook potatoes in five minutes and be done, I'm a happy girl. And I think, I think we'll do, uh, we'll do instant pot mac and cheese one of these days. I know Maria would appreciate a quick mac and cheese. All right, we're pretty much soft. Even these guys, oh yeah, they're all separating into the rings, so these are nice and soft. A little more salt. I am going to add my potatoes. I forgot my measuring cup. Do you do this? It's a quart size deli container. Quarts or four cups. If I just have this in the dish drainer, this is what's gonna be used to measure my water. All right, that's four. I'm 
I'm going to go with about five cups. It's going to be different for you. It depends on your potatoes, of course, but and you're going to decide, is this uh, how thick you like your soup? Okay. So it's just enough to cover. I'm thinking I should add another cup, but uh, whatever. If we need to thin it out. There's always room for cream. That's another thing. I'm going to be adding cream to this, so I don't want to put too much liquid. All right. I'm going to go with the cubes because I feel like it. These are... Each cube makes one... Oh, half a cube. Okay, so each cube is good for two cups. So I'm just going to add two because it doesn't have to be full strength. That's like like Lipton soup mix. And once I uh, put in the cream, don't hate me because I'm using bouillon cubes, okay? Because busy people need shortcuts. Now, if I was making this for my mother, please don't say anything, Doris, I would not put black pepper in here, but I'm putting black pepper in it. Let that go. Let's see. Alice, what are you drinking? She's going to tell me, right? Your vodka's in yours, but I want to know what exactly. Um, so I'm going to wash my hands because, ew, I don't want leaks in my drink. Do you, um, do you decorate your kitchen for Christmas? I don't know if anybody else does that. Vodka, tonic, and lime? Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Let's see how much lime juice I can get out of this thing. So, oh, it was last year. I, um, had surgery on my hand, and I was bored to death because I couldn't do anything with one hand. And I'm used to being busy. And I was so depressed seeing everything in my kitchen just so blah <laughs> that I decided to make curtains. Yes, with one hand. So I had my hand in a cast for a while and I used hem tape, believe it or not. And if you have um, done any sewing, if you've ever had to hem your skirts and you're like, oh, I need to hem my skirt and I don't have time. Hem tape is fantastic. It's, what's it called? Some kind of adhesive with the heat. You just iron it on. It's fantastic. You're drinking Merlot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure with the red wine here. I'm not even sure about the cranberry. But anyway, I made those curtains. How cute, right? Mm-hmm. It's simple. Simple. Okay. Let's go with the ice. I'm going to keep checking just because I'm going to get nervous. And I'll probably get so nervous that I'm going to run my yap. You couldn't make anything with two good hands? I bet you could. I'm a little um, cornball. I know. Because who else needs curtains like that? But I'm a December baby, so it makes me happy. All right, I have my post-its. Do you have post-its? I have post-its all over the place. I'm doing a half ounce of lime, a full ounce of cranberry juice cocktail, which is why I don't need simple syrup. This has been in my fridge for quite a while. Thank you, thank you. Um, you can freeze these. So I need an ounce for this. I would find a ice cube tray. I would find an ice cube tray that was an ounce and I would make cubes of cranberry juice or whatever. And I would put it all together in my bags. So I have a full bar accoutrement in my freezer. I'm a little ridiculous. 
half ounce of the triple sec. And then we're gonna go with an ounce and a half of the vodka. I don't know much about vodka, and I'm sure I'll have people tell me. Have, this was Paul's, he loved absolute and cranberry, and we're just gonna do that because why not? Um, basically, it was just hold the cranberry over the vodka and he was a happy guy. Have I ever seen, I'm sorry, I missed it. Freezer door cocktails, what are freezer door cocktails? Explain, explain. <laughs> well, thank you, Susan. Yes, post-its are good for us. My fancy cocktail shaker. Kristen, tell me, tell me about freezer door cocktails. Uh, are you smiling because you just waved the cranberry over the vodka? Yeah. Very classy over here. That's too much. Clearly I need a tumbler. Cosmo, cheers. No, I don't worry about garnishes at home. Unless it's a margarita and then there is always salt on the rim. What's your coffee cup? Oh, <laughs> yes, it is your coffee cup, Alice. I hope we're going to see you on Saturday, young lady. Yeah, see, mason jars are so much easier. Make a big batch of the drink in the alcohol bottle and keep it in the freezer so your drinks are pre-made. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. It depends on what it is. Over the summer, I discovered Ciroc Mango Vodka. That with some tonic water and lime is outstanding. And that vodka was left in the freezer. That is so heavy. So if you have one of those Dutch ovens, don't burn anything in it because it ruins the finish. And I don't know if Le Creuset is any different than the Lodge. This is a Lodge from Target and it was already dinged up on the outside, which is why they gave me a discount, but who knows? Um, I burned beef stew in there. So there's a difference between creating the fond when you um, brown the meat and the onions and stuff and burning the hell out of it. I burned the hell out of it and then I couldn't clean it. And now it's just all discolored and stained and it doesn't really matter, so whatever. It's clean, but it's stained. So yada yada, it's fine. All right, so. <laughs> Buttery Chardonnay. I am not a wine drinker. Not a beer drinker either. But I will say, if you have not, you know, bubbling beautifully. If you have not gone to Eddie's Roadhouse beer dinners, uh, Eddie's is in Warwick right on Main Street, one of my favorite places, and they do shop with us, and they use local produce, local products, not just produce. Um, they're really awesome people, and they change their menu based on the season. So when you see rutabagas on the menu, guess what? They're local and in season. All right, you can hear this. I may have to turn it down a little. There you go. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Nothing like me putting my head right in the, <laughs> in the light. It's like an eclipse. Okay. So, gonna let that go. Won't take much longer. I guess I should get my heavy cream out. So I need heavy cream to go in there. My immersion blender's out. That's pretty much it. If you do have um, croutons or something, those are always good. You like a, a grilled cheese. I kind of like a brie grilled cheese with this. That's delicious. But homemade croutons are always good or store-bought croutons. 
And I bet Susan is going to tell me she has the perfect spice blend to make croutons. What do you think? So Susan is from the Spice Apothecary. Susan and Mike will also be here on Saturday at the farm. Last, what was our last event? The open house in November. I think you guys had a, a really good turnout and people were very receptive to the items that you're sharing. There were soup mixes, the beer bread mix, the dip mixes, spice blends. You kind of want to take your cooking, like I was saying, I did Italian gnocchi, I did um, New Orleans jambalaya. Well, Thomas said it wasn't authentic, whatever. And what else did I say I was doing? Oh, this is like French potato leek soup. Oh, and I did the pierogies from Poland. So you can do all kinds of different things just by taking your spices from a different culture or a different blend. Perfect. So, oh, the beer bread was great. Okay. That's good to know. That means you guys better bring more. I think you sold out last time, right, Susan? Yikes. These pots get hot fast and stay really hot. I'm gonna leave that lid on just to keep it, keep it nice and hot. Oh no, I'm sorry. Hannah, you'll be here and you'll see almost everyone except Wendy Enoch and Soons. Taste of Tuscany, garlic, herb, and everyday seasonings. Okay, so there's three different items that would be great to make your own homemade croutons. This tastes like another one. How do you make croutons? I used russet potatoes. Okay, good. So everything, all the beer bread is gonna be restocked. So you just add beer. I was mistaken. I thought you drank the beer and made the mix with water. Making it with beer makes so much more sense. Um, how do you make croutons? You use some nice crusty bread, cut it up into cubes, toss it with melted butter and olive oil if you want. You can do a combo and then add whatever seasonings you like. Put it on a baking sheet and put it in the oven, 375, 350. Watch them, they will get dried out and brown and golden and delightful. And that's your croutons. So you don't need to buy them from a bag because they don't really taste that great. Um, no, no Wendy Enoch. She usually has other events right before Christmas. And we were kind of spur of the moment here. Um, yeah, I've talked about the crappy season, crappy season that we've had. So we really don't have a lot um, to sell. So it was kind of, are we gonna do it? Or are we not gonna do it? So we just decided to do it and here we are this week. But that'll be it. That'll be it for the season. Always be careful when you're giving it a good stir. <laughs> See how it's getting thicker? We're not quite, I'm gonna press it against the pan. It broke, but it didn't mush up, so not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. Um, yeah, so it's getting nice and cooked down. We've already been on here 35 minutes. That's why I like the Instant Pot, but hey, we got soup and a drink. Who else will be with us on Saturday? Luna Grown Jam. Um, today's Tuesday. Thursday, I will be posting a recipe for Adam's, and it's a gluten-free jam tart. It's a, an oatmeal and gluten-free flour blend crust in a little tart pan. Oh, I put them away already. In the little tart pan, you press it all in there, put some jam on top, crumble it off the, the dough, crumble a little bit on top to make a crumble, and then throw it in the oven, and you have 
a tart in no time. So Luna Grown will have all the jam that you need. If you wanna do something like that for the holidays, it's simple. Uh, if you, the recipe that I post on Thursday, if you double it, you can do it in an eight inch square pan. That will be simple. And you can use regular flour. I did not, I'm trying to use a little more gluten-free stuff. So I use the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one um, uh, flour alternative. It worked well. I hear it. I'm gonna get my cream. Do you cook with cream? Or do you say, no, I'm not gonna use cream because it's too fattening. You know what, you don't have to use a ton of it because the, the fat in the heavy cream, it really carries through and it carries the flavor. So it's better to use a half cup of this than two cups of skim milk and a thickener. Plus it tastes good, it feels good in your mouth, it's going to last longer, it'll make you happy. Use a little cream. Let's see what we got here. Almost. One thing I did not do yet is taste it. So let me do that. That kills me every time. Do you routinely burn your mouth when you taste things? The first scoop. That's good. So what did I have in here? Two tablespoons of butter, about a pound of leeks, two and a half pounds of potatoes, a little salt, a couple of bouillon cubes, water. Now I'm gonna add cream and blend it up. I'll blend it up first, then add cream. It's delicious. I might add a little water. I'm gonna see. I don't know about you guys, but when I used to go to the farm markets, when we used to sell at farm markets, it was cold in this weather. And you're standing out there on parking lots, concrete all day long. You needed something nice and warm to kind of warm you up from the inside. So I would make things like this soup and blend it, have it drinkable. So I would put it in my thermos that was primed nice and hot. And I would keep that all day and be able to kind of sip the soup. So while some people need a spoon, I'm good. Have a nice sippable soup. This one I will put in a nice mug and we'll enjoy those. Thomas likes it too. Yes, exactly, cream. Cream is necessary. Do you buy it in a quart? Always. You never know when you're gonna need it. All right, so who else? I wanna know who else decorates their kitchen. Do you decorate? I posted the other day that I was having some trouble getting into the spirit of decorating the house and I was not sure who else felt the same. I know when I have spoken to a few people, they said similar things. I am shocked by the tragedies all around us. Um, it's very, it's very bittersweet these holidays, you know, but we are forever grateful for the people that are with us. How long did this take? 15 minutes? Okay, we're good. We are good. Let's move this out of the way. I'm gonna bring this over here because I'm using my immersion blender. Do you have one of these? You do too? Oh, good, Barbara. Oh, really, Sherry? Oh, that's good. Well, good luck with the new place. Next year, you're gonna have all kinds of new things. Oh, see, that's, that's it, Kristen. 
if it makes you smile when you see it, that's the best reason to do it. I have too much crap in here. Okay, this one is Mueller, like Bueller, only Mueller. Boat motor. It is a blender, All right? And it will cut your fingers, so don't put your fingers down there. Put it in and blend it. So I'm blending it without the cream. This is way easier than using a um, freestanding blender. How about we don't talk while we do this? You don't have to blend it till it's smooth. And if my father's watching, he's probably gonna tell me, stop, 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 don't blend it anymore. people like Instagram reels because I can cut through all this stuff and you don't have to see it. <laughs> yeah. That's how I, I don't think I decorate the bathroom. Oh no, I do have towels in there. So my aunt gave me a bunch of holiday towels. Look, no well. Um, kitchen towels and bath towels and tablecloths. So I use all of those. You're right, this does make you feel good. Let me show you what it looks like. It's really thick, kind of like, mm -hmm, like runny mashed potatoes at this point. For any mashed potatoes. It would be just like me to drop this lid in here. That's about a quarter cup, about a half cup, about three quarters of a cup. Let's do this. I know, are you bored yet? Oh my gosh, look at this. I'll give it a taste and likely burn my face. What is that? One bathroom is snowman and one Santa. The snowman one has toilet cover rug. Okay, people chuckle that his carrot nose sticks straight up off the lid. Well, you know, I would go somewhere else with that, but okay. Yeah, that immersion blender is fantastic. I don't know how, I don't even know how I came across it. Mm. It could be a little thinner, actually. Mm. <laughs> it does smell good. Not bored, just hungry? Okay. So I'm gonna go and add a little bit more water. And yes, you have to adjust your seasonings a little bit, but this was fine, I had enough. Seasoning. Leave it to me to not have any garnishes. No garnishes for my soup. 
So I'll just have to go with some black pepper. I'll show you the texture. Look how creamy and beautiful that is. So you can see, yes, I just dripped it on the edge. You can see how if you had a um, some nice croutons on top, it would be a nice crunchy kind of compliment. Don't tell anybody. Whatever, it's mine. I would love some fresh tarragon on here, but I do not have any. That was in the greenhouse. Butter and pepper, that's all you need, right? Exactly. Butter, pepper, cream, potatoes, and leeks. So is there anything else I can do for you before I go? We've got Saturday, we've got Spice Apothecary, we've got Cedar Hill Botanicals, Lou Negron, um, the Fearless Cook. I posted her menu this afternoon, so you can check out Jody's menu. And if you want any kind of gluten-free baked goods, uh, the cookie trays are sure to go fast, so you should order those by tomorrow, okay? Because she needs a couple days to prepare those cookies. It takes a while. Um, and then Black Rock Baker will be here also, sourdough and all kinds of good things. So I hope we will see you. Thank you, Patty. I'm sorry, I, did, I won't have any leaks for you guys at the farm stand because those are all finished and clearly these were sitting in my fridge for way too long. I hope you put some in the freezer. Okay, so if you have ever have extra leaks, slice them up, throw them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in the freezer, they can go in raw. You don't have to do anything else to them and then they're ready to just grab a handful and throw in your skillet or in your stock pot. You're welcome, Sherry. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you found us this year. Anything else, guys? Thanks, Mel. Appreciate that. I hope I will see you guys on, uh, on Saturday. So if you come to the farm, make sure you say hi. And we'll see what we get to next week. Thanks a bunch. Have a great night. Bye.